In my recent videos in the Justin Evans case, I've been showing discrepancies throughout statements made by Kiara Collins. She is the roommate of Justin's, the girlfriend of his best friend, and it seems somewhat of an enemy. Today's video is the last of Kiara's statements she made in May. I have been sifting through them for the past little while. It's transcribed and I will be speaking verbatim as I have in the past. And in my last video, I showed some major discrepancies and I'll leave that video link in the description box below. I showed how Kiara gave a few versions of when she last physically saw Justin and it didn't line up, as well as other discrepancies in her statements. There were actually many versions, much like the location when she was talking about Saturday Alibi Day, two days before Justin was finally reported missing. I can tell you though, we are getting closer to the truth little by little. So today I'm going to talk about the rest of her statements, covering her thoughts about Justin, the polygraph, and also some patterns that I've detected and some interesting points. And I'll show you the discrepancies. There's a plethora. It's taken so long to sift through all that BS, like I mentioned before, and I do want to expand the circle. Unfortunately, the household doesn't know how to tell the truth and keeps me in that inner circle for now. So first, let's talk about Justin and Kira's thoughts about him. She had been living with Justin for about a year and her relationship with Bud has been about a few years. So in previous statements, she said how she didn't like Justin and that it wasn't a secret that she didn't. She also said that she dreaded the thought to have him in her wedding party. Now in May, she flips the narrative and lays it on quite thick in my opinion. I believe that this was actually a rehearsed statement as well. The question was, can you describe Justin, his personality and his hobbies? Her response, Justin is honestly a great guy. He always did the right thing. He was always bubbly. He talked to anyone and everyone. It, he just, he's really great. He is always a jokester. He was easy to get along with. Um, yeah, and hobbies. I, I didn't talk to Justin much, but I know he was playing this game not too long ago and he was playing with a friend of his, but it was really cool and it took brains to figure out the game. So he's also incredibly smart, so. Now this was at the beginning of the interview in May and it did seem very rehearsed. Also, she talked about Justin in the past tense since he's disappeared and now here she bounces, it's a little bit of a combo. Notable though, notice how she says he always did the right thing. I believe that this is the very thing that actually bothered Kiera, that he always seemed to do the right thing. Justin was reliable, he fought for what was right, he's kind and respectful. He'd also tell people where he was going and if he wouldn't be in for dinner. So I do believe that this bothered her. This is my opinion of what I see. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And she is bothered that he always did the right thing. And so we see things from her, like intentionally saying he smoked pot, just kind of to out him. And about the weed, this is what was asked. Why did you talk about Justin smoking weed in the shed? Here's her response. She says, that's a great question. So because Justin was such a great guy, I felt it important to bring up the fact that he smoked pot. Um, there's nothing to be ashamed about that. Um, it's legal here in Ontario. And honestly, a lot of people smoke. Um, I think that it is important to bring up because Justin was such a great guy. I just thought of it like, why would somebody want to hurt him, um, you know? So I just thought that pot would be important to bring up. Kira also smokes weed and she says, I smoke occasionally, uh, but doesn't at all. Yeah, socially I smoke weed. Now in the original statement back in January, both Bud and Kiera's statement made sure to talk about Justin and his pot. Bud's statement says, after that, my mom suggested I check his shed to see if maybe he came home and was sitting out there smoking his pot and listening to his book. And Justin would listen to his book on his phone. Interesting here, he was found in the shed with no phone. And also where he was found, no phone. So where's Justin's phone? Was it left in the house? Because he did have it home with him when he came back from his family's house that weekend before. And he apparently had it Saturday afternoon when he texted his mom 
even though it was uncharacteristic of him and I believe it wasn't from him. Stay tuned for that video. Cannot wait to find out where that phone pinged. So Kiera also talked about living together and moving out. The question was, was Justin trying to move out or planning to? Kiera says, not that I know of. And another question was asked, did you guys want Justin to co-sign on an apartment for you? She says, we were going to get an apartment, all three of us. Um, I wasn't comfortable moving in um, with someone I didn't get along with, and that's why we didn't move in. So according to Kiera, they were planning on getting an apartment, all three of them, which by the way, they wanted Justin to co-sign for the apartment, and Justin was never even invited to see the locations or see these apartments. And Justin also said, no, I won't co-sign. So she's saying that Justin wasn't planning on moving out, but in the next breath that they were going to move out. Then she says she wasn't comfortable moving in with someone she didn't get along with, and she's been living with him for the past year. So there are discrepancies again, and it makes it even worse if she's asking for Justin to co-sign, yet she didn't want to move in with him, and she says she didn't want to move in with him. Also, the question was posed if Justin paid rent, and was he up to date with his rent payments? Her response, yes he did, yeah he was great with payments just as far as I know, he didn't pay me so. And Justin was responsible and had good credit. Bud and Kiera are said not to. The next question that was asked is, is he the type of person to have enemies? She says, no, not that I know of, he got along with everybody so. Now this is interesting, right? He's not the type of person to have enemies, which the only person that is really stated that he doesn't get along with is Kiera. And not only did she flip the script about him being a great guy, but she also did it in a previous post saying all of a sudden she misses him, she says she feels crappy that she misses him, and that she now wanted him to watch over her unborn children from up in heaven. No joke. So if Justin got along with everybody, then she really wants to paint the picture that she likes him now, right? And you can't really rewind time, can you? So then she does go on and she addresses not liking Justin. Here's her response. Yeah, so I really wanted to clear the air on that. Um, you know, I don't think maybe it was the smartest thing to make a post saying that I didn't like Justin. But I was scared that someone was gonna, cause it, a lot of people knew that Justin and I didn't get along and I didn't want that to be thrown out there because I want to be transparent and my thought process was I don't have anything to be or I don't have anything to hide and I'm not guilty of anything so I was okay to share. I see now how that was hurtful and I totally, but I wanted to explain why Justin and I didn't get along. Because Justin is a great guy, don't get me wrong, Just Justin, um, and I would never badmouth Justin. But um, some people do know, but um, Justin's sister is Bud's ex, which is my boyfriend, and it just made things uncomfortable, which is normal, and Justin was just like the connection, right? So, so not the smartest thing to post that she doesn't like him, but that was actually posted more than once. It's actually probably one of the few truths she said in the past six months is that she didn't like Justin, and even that she can't even stay consistent on. Also, another post she regretted doing was the TikTok post where she said, too busy laughing five days after Justin was reported missing. And she said that she regretted it because she didn't realize that someone would see it, so she said she learned her lesson on that one. Then they talked about Justin's behavior, and the question was, was Justin acting strange or funny? And she said, um, see, that one is an interesting question because I didn't talk to Justin, so I, I don't think so. I know he was sore, so that's about the strangest to me, um, so he was sleeping a lot more, but that was about that. So about the sleeping a lot more comment, Justin was at his family's house the weekend before he died, and Justin did hurt himself, it was minor, it wasn't that severe. He was trying out a winter sled and hit the throttle and it was a little too much and he jolted back. So I find it especially interesting why she says he was sleeping a lot more. As most of you know, I believe Justin was dead far before they called it in. So I really don't like that comment about sleeping more. Next question, did Justin struggle with his mental health? Kiara says, no, no I don't. I don't think he did. FYI, Bud feels that way as well, that there wasn't anything out of the ordinary or 
anything that was bugging Justin, the family also agrees. Notable as well, Kier is the one that states that she actually has been diagnosed with depression and anxiety. Now, something very interesting occurred while I was comparing these statements, and it was about the topic of dinner. In May, Kiera talked about her Saturday alibi and also talks about getting home and Justin not being there for dinner. She also talks about the next day, the Sunday. Here's what she said. Okay, so I'll explain from the Saturday that we went shopping like when we got home till the time we called. So Saturday we got home, um, we hung out in the bedroom, did our thing, and uh, we've seen that Justin wasn't home. So we had assumed that he went to his family's place. Um, no biggie. And then Sunday night, he didn't show up for dinner and which was out of character for him. And I just want to emphasize the fact that when something does happen, you don't think the worst happened right away, especially in Kilworthy. Kilworthy is tiny. You don't assume the worst, right? So you know we just, oh, that's out of the blue kind of thing. And then he didn't show up to go to work. So Bud is still thinking, oh, that's weird. But you know, could just be out of the blue. So in that statement, she's saying that it's odd that Justin didn't show up for dinner and it's out of character for him, which is what the family has been saying since the beginning. Justin wouldn't want Glenna to cook for him if he's not going to be there. So he would give her the heads up and let her know. And of course, Glenna doesn't seem to remember the last day that she saw Justin and she did question it, but Bud fed her that day that she saw Justin. Remember Glenna, you saw Justin on Saturday. Now back to the January statement by Kira talking about dinner. She said, we left, picked up two people, shopped in Barrie, and after dropping off the two people, we got home around between 5 and 6 p.m. Justin didn't show for dinner that night, which was not unusual since he slept through dinner 95% of the time, and we thought he could be with his family as he does this on weekends most times. Note, Justin did not go away every weekend to his family's house. Also, he would wake up, have dinner, and then go back to bed. Just more discrepancies and lies here. At this point, pretty hard to ignore, right? Wouldn't you agree? And here's Bud's statement back in January. So over the past few years, it hasn't been uncommon for Justin to sleep through dinner if he's not going anywhere on the weekends. Well, this was regarding the Saturday, right? I thought they said that he believed he went somewhere and now all of a sudden he's sleeping. Sunday, he states, so I wasn't worried about him till Sunday night came around when he hadn't answered my texts. What happened about dinner? Next question is about safety. The question is, are you fearing for your own safety living in the place Justin disappeared? She says, that's a good question and I don't know how to really answer that one really well. Um, I don't know, it's scary that Justin was hurt in our backyard and don't get me wrong, it's, and that part's inaudible, and then she says, but I don't fear for the person who hurt Justin that they're going to hurt me. The scary part for me is the harassment and stuff, like people who really think that we hurt Justin. And those people do something to me because we had people stop at the house and stuff. Next question is, why did you say Justin was hurt in your backyard? How do you know he was hurt? Weirdest answer, and I mentioned this in my last video. She says, um, how do I even explain that? Um, there are, um... Um, news articles about there being indications of or foul play hasn't been ruled out. So this is a very bizarre answer and she knows that he was more than hurt in that shed and she even took pictures inside of that shed with it full of blood and she even owned up to it. First it was Bud that took the pictures, now she's saying it was her. And she saw a few people after this statement that she made they were commenting and they were saying like WTF was that and she quickly said she wanted to flee from the situation and she said she's overwhelmed by the comments and wanted to finish this soon. Now knowing what we know Justin was finally found and just minutes from where he lived. Law enforcement are switching gears on the case and saying that it's possible that it was a suicide so it's odd that he had such a volume of blood in that shed to the point where they didn't think he would survive it, yet somehow he walked himself to the swamp while bleeding to death, is six foot three and no one sees him, and no trace of evidence anywhere. So I do disagree, but it's so interesting to me. This question pops up, and no, Kiera actually in this interview chose most of the questions to be asked so she can provide the answers. Also, this was 18 days before Justin was found. Here's the question. Did Justin ever go for walks in the area alone? Kiera says, um, I hadn't seen him go recently for any. 
he didn't walk because he biked, but um, it was starting to get cold. So I hadn't seen him go out for a bike ride, but he did do that sometimes. Isn't that interesting? Weird kind of question to choose, isn't it? She chose the question and yet 18 days later, Justin is found just a short walk away. Interesting. Cheese and rice, that's a red flag. Now, it would take the average person about seven minutes to walk from his shed to around the point where he was found. But an injured person would perhaps take longer, especially someone who is bleeding to death, wouldn't you think? So if you're bleeding to death, maybe your walk would take an extra 10 to 15 minutes to the other location, or around 10 to 15 minutes, I should say, without a drop of blood. I find that fascinating. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's talk about the polygraph. The polygraph was allegedly taken at the end of March and Kiera made sure to go into my comment section and talk about how she and Bud did the polygraph and she actually passed it and she also made a statement on Facebook about how she passed the polygraph. Here's what she said. Polygraph tests. I wanted to inform everyone that Bud and I passed polygraph tests about Justin. We did the test Monday, March 22nd and Tuesday, March 23rd, today. Unfortunately, the OPP slash detectives cannot give a statement about this because this is an open police investigation. So I am prepared for the comments that will call us liars, but that is the truth. Here's the question posed five weeks after this polygraph. Did you guys really take a lie detector test? Kara says, yes, and I wanted to also talk about that one good one. Um, so I can't talk about the testing details because um, the lady who ran the test asked that we don't talk about it, the authenticity for other people. Um, if they do take one, but it is very thorough and Bud and I did our own test separate from each other. It is, I couldn't, and it was inaudible, uh, anyone wrongfully passing that. And I also want, I forgot to mention this in my post, but um, when you do a lie detector test at the very beginning, they read your rights and walk you through it kind of thing. That if you don't pass your test or if anything shows up negative or you are trying to lie, um, you are going to be detained immediately. And obviously Bud and I aren't detained, so I just think it's just another good point to like prove to people that we did pass our test. And I think I have one more thing written for them. Um, oh yes, passing them. So um, I was told my test was successful and me like wanting things in clear terms, I said, so did I pass? And the lady said yes. So she didn't directly say I passed, but she did answer my question and say I did. So again, which one is it? You passed, you didn't pass. The lady said, but the lady didn't say. And FYI, authorities aren't going to tell you that you passed and polygraphs are a process. So she sings it out to the world that she passed and even from her own mouth, she said that she didn't directly say that she passed. Then Kara reads out a statement in that interview that Bud wrote and part of it, Bud says, there isn't much to do to prove my innocence. So I just don't understand why people wouldn't start looking in different places. I wish people would realize at this point that accusing us isn't helping bring Justin home especially when the detectives have used several investigative strategies on us and still turning up with nothing. Now, here's a little pattern that Kiera likes to use in that interview. And people have patterns, we all do. They are unique to each person. So for Kiera, the line that is a pattern, an interesting one, is the phrase, that's about that. She also used variations of it. She says, that's just it, and that was that. And she does it in specific areas, I believe when it is actually false information. She ends her sentences with, that's about that, or the variations like I mentioned. And she does that when she talks about specific topics, such as one, not wanting to get emotional and wants to be lighthearted when she's talking about Justin, two, about the secret phone call that was made that no one wants to talk about and avoids anything that happened on that Wednesday, even besides that phone call, three, writing Bud's posts and going over each other's statements, four, Justin sleeping a lot that week, and five, the sunglasses that Bud was wearing two months after Justin died. So let's dive into that. 
The first one that she doesn't want to get emotional when talking about Justin, she said, I just wanted to also mention that I'm going to be lighthearted and I don't want people to think I'm bubbly or happy. It's just because I don't want to get emotional. That was that. Have we ever seen Kiera emotional over Justin? No, we haven't. Only angry. And let's face it, when you don't like someone, you probably aren't going to be too heartbroken if they're not around anymore. One would think though, perhaps, if another human being lost their lives, even though you didn't really care for that person, you would kind of have a heart and feel for that person, but we haven't seen that yet. In fact, I mentioned the emotions one would feel in one of my previous videos, and Kiera borrowed the terminology and used it the very next day in one of her posts. I really don't think she feels much about what happened to Justin. Only that eyes are on her, she doesn't like it, and every choice she makes has a consequence. So in my opinion, this is also a false statement. Next, about the phone call that happened where Bud called in for Justin. She says, it was rumored Thursday, but it's not so, I don't know where that came from. Bud doesn't like making phone calls and there's actually been times where he's gotten in trouble for texting instead of calling in. Um, either um, there's been somebody at work that has been harassing him, so I assume it's the same person who had said that, but it's not true and I just, I don't, I just know that people are going to comment and say like, why'd you wait so long to clear it up? Um, yeah, well that was basically it. It was just, I don't know where that came from. Oh, sorry, yeah, that was that on that one. So I've been talking about this secret call for quite some time. And most of you know, I've been talking about that secret phone call that happened on the Wednesday. And she was sneaky here and says it was rumored on Thursday. She knows darn well it wasn't and she watches my videos, so that was that. Another fabrication that's two for two. Next, number three. She talked about going over each other's grammar, meaning Bud's post and why Bud wasn't talking. She says, anything that is said on my account is me. Anything is said on Bud's account is him. Um, Bud's account is him. We do read each other's posts and go over each other's grammar, but that's about that. You see the pattern here? We've been seeing Kiera talk for Bud and sticking up for him and posting. We haven't seen her knight in shining armor sticking up for her or Justin yet. And pretty sure her posts are made by her on Bud's account. Bud is a man of very little words and Kiera isn't. And notable, she has a pattern to her writing that's very, very similar, if not exact, to Bud's, Bud's post. Also, there was a question about why Bud didn't want to do the interview. She said, um, I just, Bud, as I said, Bud doesn't even like talking on the phone, so this is not something he would be comfortable doing. Um, a lot of people, and then it's inaudible, I don't mind coming on and sharing, so that's just it. Next, number four, question is, was Justin acting strange or funny? She says, um, see, that one is an interesting question because I didn't talk to Justin, so I don't think so. I know he was sore, so that's about the strangest to me, um, so he was sleeping a lot more, but that was about that. And as I said, sleeping a lot more is the fabrication. He sure is sleeping, because he's dead. And as I said earlier, he was sore because of hitting the throttle so hard and jolted back, but wasn't injured that much. And no reason to sleep so much. This is such a load of you know what. Let me know your thoughts. I'm sure at this point you might have a lot of thoughts and comments. Something interesting as well, they push the narrative of him sleeping a lot more and that's why he seems to be missing dinner. They also pushed that A535 a lot. Don't you think if someone was suicidal that they wouldn't give a crap about putting A535 muscle cream on? It's interesting, right? Now to the sunglasses. Number five. Question is, why was your boyfriend wearing Justin's sunglasses after the disappearance? She says, um, so Justin had given his sunglasses to Bud. Uh, Bud was wearing them to feel close to Justin, um, and that was that, so. Sunglasses are also a lie. Kiara said, and I pointed out in my last video, that Justin wasn't ready to give the glasses up yet. She also said she knew that Justin gave them to Bud. So discrepancy there, and yet, Bud says he bought them from Justin for 60 bucks for a $40 pair of sunglasses and not even, I don't think, and they are three years old. And Justin loved those sunglasses and it just so happens that they show up in pictures two months after Justin died. So all five topics, 
All five lies, interesting little pattern going on, don't you think? Do you think that there's still nothing going on or do you think there's something more to that? Let me know in the comments below. And Kira has been very active in this case since the beginning. And ever since I've been covering this case, she's been very active in the comments, minus the last few weeks. Now I had offered her to tell her side of the story and even offered that to her mom as well and provided my email, but both avoided it and didn't respond. Well, something must have really spooked her because in my last video that I made, she did comment again and addressed me. And then she private messaged me and asked me to take the picture down that I did uh, of the map of the trailer park. I did a general circle and more importantly, she asked me to take down the videos with her and Bud in them. But when I offered an opportunity to even speak off camera to tell me, you know, the truth once and for all and set the record straight, she refused and she called me a nasty lady. And as she says, that's about that. So there were some very notable comments in that conversation and uh, mentioned something that this will all be for nothing. Justin isn't nothing. And if this doesn't show the world that there's more to it than, than we know and that meets the eye, I don't know what will. Although, give it some time and I'll be connecting a little bit more of some dots. Let me know your thoughts below. Please share this video out where you can. Let's get it to as many eyes as possible. Please subscribe if you haven't done so and please like and please share. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.